Welcome everybody to our little Bible study and today we're going to go over 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and um, we're going to have a great time in the Word as we're going through our edification process to help ourselves to become more sanctified because sanctification is not only a position but also a practice and a condition as we are growing spiritually. And so our curriculum is Paul's epistles, and our textbook is the King James Bible. So um, I'm glad everyone has joined us. Let's open with a word of prayer. Dear Father God, in Jesus' name I come before you, and I just thank you for this lovely day. I thank you for Maureen and Patty, my students. I thank you for um, all those who are watching on Facebook and uh, will be watching on YouTube. I pray, Father, that you would help us to understand your word by your Holy Spirit and that um, we would uh, be enlightened and useful laborers together with you and that you would help us to get a better idea of how to spend our time wisely and not waste our time. And we thank you for this um, study today and for your word. And we ask for your Holy Spirit to guide us and, and that you, Lord Jesus Christ, would live through us. And uh, that the living word, uh, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, would give us understanding of his living word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, so um, let's go over what um, this chapter breaks down into. So 1 Corinthians chapter 3, through, um, verses 1 through 8, Paul talks about carnal, their worldly, and their babes, the, uh, the uh, Corinthians. And if someone is carnal, then they are really behaving like someone that's unsaved. So their spiritual growth is not happening. That's not what we want. So um, then in verses 9 through 23, we're going to be talking about rewards for being laborers together with God. So we're going to be touching on the judgment seat of Christ today. So we're going to hit four points um, because Paul corrects the Corinthian babes. He wants them to refocus on Christ and what he's done and not on human wisdom. Um, number two, Paul will tell them how the church should look upon Paul and his ministry and what a minister does. And we are our ministers too. And number three, God wants us to have some fruit of value at the judgment seat of Christ. So we're going to be looking at that. And number four, we will look at what it means in verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. So we're going to take a look at what... Um, the Bible means by that. Okay. So in the process, um, at the judgment seat of Christ, we, we want to have some gold, silver, and precious stones. And we're going to be looking into um, Proverbs chapter 2, where those three, um, well, treasures are t discussed and basically the gold is wisdom the silver is understanding and knowledge um, is, is also the precious stones so um, wisdom is defined in the um, Noah Webster 1828 dictionary as the right use of or exercise of knowledge and the best way to accomplish anything praiseworthy. Wisdom 
in action, effect, and practice. It discerning or judging what is the most just, prudent. Now the word prudent means foreseeing evil and avoiding it. Proper and useful uh, way of doing things. So, and then understanding means to apprehend truth or comprehend truth communicated by others. For example, um, if we look at Job 32, verse 8. Can someone um, turn to Job 32, verse 8, and read that? I have it here, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead and read that, somebody. Job 32, verse 8. Patty, okay. read it real loud. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Okay, so um, when the Spirit of God communicates with our spirit using His Word, then uh, we get understanding of what God is saying. Um, knowledge is a clear and certain perception of true facts. So then it boils down to wisdom is the proper application of knowledge and understanding. So wisdom, you know, uh, Proverbs they, talks about get wisdom. Okay. So um, now there was something that I talked about last week that I couldn't remember the word. Okay, and so it's, it, it's a positive. Whenever in grammar you have something um, separated by commas, such as mystery, hidden wisdom of God, that means that the, this noun, the hidden wisdom of God, is synonymous or equal to the other noun over here, which is mystery. For example, if we say Trump, the president, we can say the president, Trump, you know, they're equal. Okay, and so we're also going to talk a little bit more about the love that is mentioned in um, 1 Corinthians 2.9. So that will be part of our review today. This is all going to be available on God's Secret Facebook page, and I'll have the notes at the bottom of the, of the video after we're done. There. Okay. Okay. Please turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. So, note we're going to take um, a little bit of a, a look around before we get into the chapter exa uh, right away. You know, it's, mm -hmm. let's look at um, two, chapter 2, verse 5. See there at the bottom, at the end of chapter 2, verse 5, where mm -hmm. God says, um, the power of God... And then look back up in 2 verse 1 where it says the testimony of God. So the power of God and the testimony of God are pretty much the same thing. So the, the, the power of God was God the Father's plan to redeem all of mankind, to um, you know, win over Satan, to you know, take the captives, all of us, before we were saved, we were actually captives of Satan. Mm -hmm. We were in bondage to Satan. There was nothing we could do except for sin. So God had to save us from the penalty of sin and the power of sin. And eventually he'll save us from the presence of sin. And he took us, took all of mankind, he redeemed those who believe what he's done from Satan. 
So he died for all the sins of all mankind, and he um, took the captives back from Satan, and he overcame death. So this was God's plan. He also fulfilled, you know, the law. So um, this is the power of God, and this is what Paul wants the Corinthians to get their eyes back on, is, is the cross work of Jesus Christ. So he's looking, Paul is looking back at the cross and having a bit more advanced understanding of the cross work of Christ because he's received more new revelation from um, the ascended, glorified Lord Jesus Christ that was not revealed until it was revealed to Paul. So the actual, well, all that Christ accomplished is being revealed to Paul. So, um, okay, now let me just go over a little bit on, on when things were written and from where. Okay, can you zero in on the map for a second? Um, never mind me. Okay, all right. So, are we ready? Everybody's eyes up here, okay? So, um, Paul wrote 1 Corinthians from Ephesus, right here, and Corinth is here. That was in Acts 19. And I believe that because it says in uh, 2 Corinthians that this is the third time I'm coming to you, I believe that there was a time when Paul actually went over here to Corinth. See how it's a straight shot across the Aegean Sea? Mm -hmm. And then went back to teach at the school of Tyrannus. So then, um, after the uproar, he makes his way back through Macedonia, and he was going to meet Titus over here in Troas, but Titus didn't show up. So he, you know, went over to Macedonia, and Titus, you know, came there with um, news of how the Corinthians were doing. So then he writes Second Corinthians from Macedonia. Okay, so when he gets down, finally he's coming. He's on his way. Actually, he goes up here to Illyricum, and then comes back down, and he goes to visit Corinth. Now, from Corinth at his third um, apostolic journey, he writes Romans. So this is very important to get. I want you to hear this with both ears, okay? When he writes Romans from Corinth, he's to Rome, he's already delivered all of that information that he wrote in that letter to Romans to the Corinthians. So he writes it down so that he can send it to his friends in Rome also. Okay, so that's just something I wanted to share with everybody before we get going here. Because remember the Corinthians, they had problems with sanctification. They, they were saved, but they were you know, stunted in their spiritual growth because they were putting the emphasis on their spiritual gifts and on man's wisdom. They were thinking tongues were more important than, you know, different languages was more important than um, prophecy and uh, sharing the Word of God. So that is some things that are still going on today as problems in the charismatic churches. Okay. Let's, um, so, um, the Lord Jesus Christ did more uh, than just out undo what Adam had done, because God redeemed Israel and the body of Christ so that um, he could have two realms of believers, heaven, in heaven and on earth. Okay, and then he'll have a new heaven and new earth with only believers in them. So he, he um, you know, not only did that, but he also gives us now his righteousness. Um, 
and in his imputed righteousness, which is something that um, Adam never had um, uh, after, you know, at, um, at any time. But he, he will, when, when Adam is resurrected, when Adam is resurrected at the second coming, there might be 75 years before he actually causes direction of the kingdom on earth believers, but Adam will be resurrected and then he'll have the new covenant in his heart, um, written on his heart and his new glorified body, so he will be saved from the presence of sin at that time completely. Just like we will, we will, um, you know, be saved we're already, if we're members of the body of Christ, living the, in the dispensation of grace, which we are, um, we will, the dead in Christ will rise f first at the rapture. Then we who are alive and remain, if we're still alive, will meet them with the Lord in the air. Then after we have met the Lord himself, the Lord himself will escort us through the second heaven, which is polluted and dark because of the Satan and his cohorts are still there, the Lord himself will escort us to the judgment seat of Christ. And at the judgment seat of Christ, the Lord will um, burn off anything that's not, you know, good, all the bad things from us so that we'll be, you know, pure, purified with that fire. So, um, let's continue now. So, the Corinthian church had many problems. One was they didn't realize that they were saved by faith, and they also needed to live by faith. So, they knew they were saved by faith, but they also have to live by faith. Uh, they didn't understand the sanctification process, that they were dead to sin, but alive unto God, and should walk in newness of life, working in and through them. So Christ's life was going to work in them and through them. And the way we do, we get that life of Christ and that thinking of Christ is by spending time in His Word. So um, Paul continues to, um, he wants them to think like Christ, he wants them to live like Christ, and he wants them to spend their time serving Christ. So he continues to correct their focus in chapter 3. And when we get there to the, you know, the chapter, we're going to finish it all today. So um, number one, as we said in those four points, um, yeah, we, we went over those, okay. So basically, um, the Corinthians needed to build their faith on a sure foundation. A sure foundation is like, you know, this book, right? The sure foundation is Jesus Christ. And then Paul put his foundation on Jesus Christ. And then if we look at um, other verses in Ephesians and so forth, We'll find out that the apostles and prophets that were also part of the early church were put their foundation on top of Christ, on top of Paul. So that's another foundation. Then the church, everyone builds on that foundation. We have a rock solid foundation because Paul's foundation is the foundation according to the revelation of the mystery. So Paul builds his foundation according to the revelation of the mystery. So if we go to uh, Romans 16.25, let's go there real quick. It's just a couple of pages over. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel, that's Paul's gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. So um, we are building 
ours on Jesus Christ according to revelation of the mystery the, that the Lord Jesus Christ gave to the heavenly people not according to Christ's earthly ministry but according to the mystery that he gave in Romans to Philemon Paul's 13 epistles to us which was kept secret since the world began but now is made manifest so it's made manifest now 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 we know if if but Satan still wants to conceal this truth we know that you know this dispensation of grace has been inserted and prophecy has been put on hold until after the rapture then God will resume his dealings with Israel so, um, but now is made manifest by the scriptures of the prophets. So, the, the, the prophets um, are the um, ones that put together the 66 books of the Bible. And they were um, in mostly in um, doing this from Antioch. In my book, God's Secret, I have um, a great meme by uh, Leanne Nico, where she shows that the, you know, true Bibles came out of Antioch. That's where P Paul was headquartered, and not out of Alexandria. So those prophets there were determining what went into the, the Bible, what was scripture, and they put all of the 66 books together and they kept writing them and sending them out so that other members of the body of Christ would have the Word of God. According to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. So um, this is the revelation of the mystery that Paul talks about in, at the end of Romans there. Uh, the word minister means servants. All ministers in the dispensation of grace have to build on that foundation of Paul if they are to be um, true, um, tr uh, tr teach true doctrine, sound doctrine, and not false doctrine. So, and then Paul warns, you know, but let everyone take heed how he builds on that foundation. Okay, so Paul is the main apostle for the body of Christ, uh, but there are secondary apostles that also helped him in his ministry. Let's turn to Acts 14.14. 14. Acts 14.14. 14. And see that, you know, even though... Well, let's look, hold, uh, yeah, hold your place in Acts 14, 14, and then um, go to Romans 11, 13 first. Okay, so in Romans 11, 13, it says, For I speak to you Gentiles, in as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. So Paul is the chief minister to the body of Christ. The main apostle. But in Acts 14, 14, what does it say there? Um, who's got it? Maureen, you have Acts 14, 14? Yes. Go ahead. Which, when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out. Okay, so here, here's the apostles with a plural, and that was Barnabas and Paul. So they were sent from Antioch by the Holy Spirit, to, on the first missionary trip. Now turn to 1 Thessalonians 2, 6. 1 Thessalonians 2, 6. I'm establishing that there are other apostles besides Paul, but Paul is the main one, and then there's secondary ones. So, um, Patty, you have that? 1 Thessalonians 2, 6? Mm -hmm. oh. Okay, just read the last phrase. Okay. Uh, as the apostles of Christ. 
Right. So as the apostles of Christ, see that's plural. Mm -hmm. And then if you go to verse 1, you see that Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus mm -hmm. are the apostles. Patty, mm -hmm. can you turn on the cooler? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's really muggy and hot here in San Diego. Okay, so the apostles and the prophets in Paul's day reiterated and confirmed the revelation that was already given to Paul and also determined what was the scriptures that were copied into the 66 books of the Bible for all mankind's benefit. So if, when we talk about prophets in 1 Corinthians as a sign gift, they are reiterating what Revelation was already given to Paul. The church of the living God was also the pillar and ground of the truth, as we learn in 1 Timothy 3.15. So when it says pillar and ground of the truth, that means that the job of the early church was to establish what was scripture and what wasn't. We are um, to understand all of the Bible in the light or from the vantage point of Paul's epistles because in 2 Timothy 2 7 Paul says consider what I say and the Lord give the understanding in all things so once we understand Romans to Philemon we'll be able to understand the rest of the Bible too but we have to come to that realizing that it was not our mail it was not written directly to us but for us okay so we're going to build on Paul's foundation and we are to make sure that we have something of lasting value that will stand the test of fire and be like gold, silver, and precious stone at the judgment seat of Christ. Will you have anything of value at the judgment seat of Christ? Believers will be rewarded based on service done in this life. So turn to 2 Corinthians 5.10. And to, to uh, underscore this, okay. So 2 Corinthians 5, 10, who's there? <laughs> Patty, you want to read it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Okay, so something will be good if we did it in the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ working through us. And it will be bad if we did it in our own flesh, in our own strength. So we're going to get more specific, so don't worry, you know. Um, okay, so um, we have to do things as adult sons that work together with God. We're laborers together with God, and we have to know what His will is and what He's doing in order to be able to work with Him. So, what is God's will for today? God's all will is that all, all men, men be, be saved, saved and to come, come to, to the, the knowledge of the truth. Okay, and so we know that oftentimes there's a big delay between being saved and coming to the knowledge of the truth. In my own case, it was 25 years before... Um, I learned, uh, came to the knowledge of truth. I was saved for a long time, but I was sitting under false preachers. Um, so God wants the unsaved saved and will use the saved human instruments to bring the gospel to the lost. God uses his word to save sinners. as We have to give them the word of God to help them. That's what cuts to their soul and saves them. Those who help others to be brought to the saving faith will have something of value. Gold, silver, and precious stones at the judgment seat of Christ. So here we, one of the fruits is the fruit of a new believer. So if you help someone in your lifetime to put their trust in the cross work of Jesus Christ and all that he's done exclusively, that they are relying on what Jesus has done for their salvation, and you'll have something of value at the judgment seat of Christ. So, now, there's other things. If we help someone...
to come to knowledge of truth, like we're trying to do with this, you know, study today. We're trying to help people to come further in their understanding of the knowledge of the truth. The truth of the uh, Word of God rightly divided. We have to realize that the last part of the Bible is Romans to Philemon. And that finished the Bible. And um, Paul wrote, was given that piece of the puzzle which has to do with the, uh, populating heaven. So another uh, way we can have fruit is um, Galatians 5, 22 through 23. Let's go there. Okay. To tell you the truth, I did not have that much fruit until I became a right divider. Until I realized that I had to apply 2 Timothy 2.15 and divide what Paul has said from what the rest of the Bible because we there are two bookends the two bookends are the two appearings the appearing of Jesus Christ to Paul on the road to Damascus and the appearing of Jesus Christ in the clouds at the rapture so in between these two bookends of God, Christ's two appearings is the mystery that was kept secret which is the dispensation of grace and the formation of the body of Christ to fill the heavenly places. So that is a special part of the Bible that has to do with, you know, re reclaiming and repopulating heaven, not earth. Okay, so um, let's, um, before we go to Galatians 5.22, let's turn to 2 Corinthians 5.1. Patty, could you please read that? Thank you. Five one. Second Corinthians five one. I should have had you read that when you were there. Oh, okay. Okay. Five, yeah. one. okay. Here we go. Uh, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Okay. So how long are we gonna be in heaven, Patty? For eternity. Correct. We're not coming back down. Okay. Yeah. Patty, can you go over there and turn the cooler down as far as the temperature? Uh -huh. Just hit the minus. Okay. So um, we are going to be eternally in the heavens. And uh, now let's take go back to uh, Galatians 5.22 through 23. Can you read that, Maureen, please? Sure. Because we're talking about having fruit at the judgment seat of Christ. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Okay, so the fruit is all of these nine things that we get from having the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ working through us. And we can do this more effectively if we... Uh, a lot, you know, study Paul's epistles and let his, what Paul says, work through us. Thank you, Patty. So, um, God wants everyone to be saved. Both Jews and Gentiles are saved by this same gospel today, which is Paul's, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So we have both Jews and Gentiles in the body of Christ, but these are individual Jews. The nation itself is put postponed. The individual Jews can be saved during this dispensation. Um, okay, so God wants unity of the faith. Grace believers are to help the weaker brothers and sisters to come to Pauline dispensational truth. Weaker, weaker um, brethren are those that think that the body of Christ began with the coming of the Holy Spirit in Acts 2. Those are the weaker brethren. And sad to say, it makes up almost, you know, over 90% of Christendom today. So, um, 
we, you know, they need to come to Pauline dispensational truth in order to have, you know, a clear understanding of what the gospel is so that they can save others and also so that they will have some doctrine stored up in their inner man because that's another way that we'll have, um, you know, something of value at the judgment seat. So, believers will be rewarded for being laborers together with God. Our motivation should be love for God and love for others. However, believers who teach, okay, we talked about that, so we, we also need to know that John 3.16 is not the gospel that saves today. Okay, and anyone who, who saved by believing what Christ has done cannot add to what Christ has done. They just have to believe what, you know, that he finished it all. Okay, so the, the body of Christ began in Acts 9 with Paul's salvation on the road to Damascus. He was the first one into the body of Christ. Mary, okay. Yes. You know, we always we in the past have used John three sixteen. Yeah. Can we? Just um, read, I I can't okay. right now. I did write about it in my other book. Uh -huh. I and we talked about it in, during our Romans. Oh. I I talked about it and it's in in this book. Uh -huh. I go into great detail why we can't use John three sixteen. But basically, okay. It basically, it has. John 3.16, if you read John 3.16, 17 and 18, it talks about understanding that the name of the Messiah to sit on the throne of David is Jesus of Nazareth. And it's not going to be Antichrist. They have to believe that the Christ that came in the first coming, not the Christ that you know claims to be the Christ during the tribulation, is the true Christ. They have to realize that Christ came the first oh. time. Oh. Okay? Oh. So that's it has is the gospel of the kingdom. Oh. John three sixteen is the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom to see you know of the king here. It does not mention, our information. It doesn't mention Christ uh, death for our real. sins. And it does, it doesn't mention that the Gentiles can now be saved apart from going through and blessing Jesus Christ, but going directly and believing, you know, the gospel that was given to Paul by the Ascended Lord. So, that was a good question. I'm glad you asked it. Okay, so now we're going to quickly review uh, verse 2-9. 1 Corinthians 2-9. And then we're going to get into our chapter. So, um, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them who love him. Okay, so the, he, this verse is actually talking about the things that God has prepared for us now and in the heavenly places. Okay, because... Um, it has to do with the body of Christ. So it's the, this, the fact that he's now prepared the dispensation of grace for the body of Christ to be saved in. And the fact that we're going to, um, you know, have all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places, as it says in Ephesians 1.3, we've already be give, been given all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So I heard Alex Kurtz recently talk about how God took a risk in trusting that we were going to be motivated by love and gave us everything up front. Mm -hmm. He knew that we would be motivated by love to serve Him and other believers and people. Okay. So turn to Isaiah 64.4. Isaiah 64.4, because it says here, as it is written, right? But as it is written, I have not seen. So last time that we went through 
chapter two, I forgot to take you to 64.4, so we're doing it now. Okay, um, it says, For since the beginning of the world men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he that hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. See, in Paul it says, for him who loves, for him who loves God, right? For them that love him. For them that love him. But in Isaiah it says, they who waited for him. That waiteth for him. So the Jews have to wait and make it through the tribulation before the second coming. Can you see that, guys? The Jews, they have to wait until the second coming for Christ. But we have it all now. Turn to Ephesians 1.3. Ephesians 1.3. This is a distinction. Okay. All right. See here? Blessed be the God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with how many? All. All spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. So we are in Christ now because we have been saved. And we already have it all. We are have all spiritual blessing in heavenly places. We are complete in Christ. We, um, you know, are still, though, His workmanship created for good works for those who love God. We've been, we've been you know quickened by him. So what I'm trying to say is that when we are going to be serving God, we don't want to revert into legalism and think that we have to have to do it. We we serve God because we want to. We're having a great time at this Bible study learning more about the Lord. Right? Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so we're <laughs> Um, I saw Maureen nod her head, <laughs> even if she didn't say anything. Right. So it's a joy to serve God now, and we're not going to, you know, get all anxious about it. But still, when we go and serve Him now, we have to do it because we know what God wants. So we're not going to not say something. So, the other day, I went to the orchard, which is a retirement home, uh, kind of a retirement um, little apartments for, for retired people, and I gave the, and I talked about the chart. I was able to give them the chart, and then I handed out little uh, handouts. Mm -hmm. Now, that is just an example of something we can do. We can hand out the little timelines to people. We can, you know, um, share the gospel with them. We don't have to go to a foreign country. We have enough people unsaved in our own family and enough people in our neighborhood and in our city that don't are not saved and not haven't come to the knowledge of truth. So we, we have to just equip ourselves so that we can be effective. Okay. So we're doing it out of a grateful heart. And we're not doing it on our own energy. We're doing it with Christ working through us as He presents opportunities. And we look for opportunities and we take them because our life is a decision. We decide we're going to do it and then we do it even if we don't feel like it. You know, we don't wait for warm, fuzzy feelings. Mm -hmm. We are not ruled by emotions. We are ruled by truth and facts. And we make decisions as mature sons of God. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, let me um, c turn to Exodus 20.20 20, real quick. Uh, can't wait to get into our study. We're almost there. Exodus 20:20. 20, 20. I just want to show you that 
Israel was not motivated by love. They were motivated by something else. So Exodus, Genesis, Exodus 20, 20. Patty, you can read that when you get there. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. Okay, so, see, they're not supposed to fear, but his fear is before them. So, you know, he'll bless them if they do right, and he'll curse them if they do wrong. Right? That's not... Today, in the dispensation of grace, God says, you're blessed, now do. Back in, you know, Israel's program, it's, you know, do and be blessed. Okay, so it's different for them because they made a contract thing. Most of the covenants were just God alone making promises. But for the law, Israel said, you know, everything that you tell us, we're going to do. So there were several places in Exodus 19.8 and 24-7. The people said, we're going to, everything you tell us, we're going to do. Okay? But we're not uh, going to go there right now. So um, we're going to see, um, okay, we've already talked about wisdom and understanding. So let's turn now to Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2, and then that will be the last group of verses that we look into before we go into our actual chapter. Proverbs chapter 2. Sorry that I'm kind of dragging this out. Okay, so I'll read that. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that Thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, there's our word, and apply thine heart to understanding, that's another one of our words, yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and lifted up thy voice for understanding, if thou seek her as silver, that's another one of our words, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the path of judgment, and preserveth the way of his saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. Okay, so there are a lot of things in the Bible that also apply to us. So God wants us to have wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. So let's get into our chapter now. Maureen, can you read the first verse? And I, brethren... Could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Okay, so Paul was unable to tell the Corinthian believers anything that was at all, um, you know, for a mature believer. Okay, because he says. And I, that's Paul, brethren, could not speak unto you as spiritual. So spiritual, that's someone that's um, mature. In the, in the, um, it's kind of like in 2.6, he, he used the word uh, perfect. And, and that means um, spiritually mature. So, but as unto carnal. Do you remember what carnal meant? Carnal meant that they were behaving like they were in their flesh and unsaved. Just like the unsaved, okay? Carna, carnal, meaning, you know, flesh. Even unto babes in Christ. So, 
they had sort of been stunted in their growth. So um, they were not very mature. Patty, verse 2. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. Okay, so I have fed you with milk. He had to give them, you know, just the basics when he was dealing with them. And, and often when we deal with other, you know, weaker brothers or unbelievers, we have to, you know, just a little drop of milk here, a little drop of milk there. We have to be very gingerly how we approach them because they're not able to take on milk. This class here is a, you know, intermediate class. So, um, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, not the meat of the word. For hitherto, that means until now, ye were not able to bear it, neither now are ye able. Okay, so not even now are they, he, is he able to give them much of the, you know, further revelation that he's already received from the Lord. So let's turn to Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. Hebrews 5, 11 through 14 says, Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, um, seeing ye are dull of hearing. They can't hear. Remember, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So these people are dull of hearing. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For every one that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Okay. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full of age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So we, um, you know, can, with practice, as you, you're not going to understand, and I don't claim that I understand the whole Bible and no one ever, you know, it's going to be something that we're going to be learning for all eternity. But you gain more and more knowledge with as you go over it and over it and over it. So um, that's what we can do. Verse 3, Maureen. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? So they were envying each other and competing um, with each other instead of working in unity. Okay? God wants unity among the brethren. The purpose of the church is to edify or build up one another in love. We are a team. In the past, when the church was in its infancy, we needed apostles but not anymore since Paul completed the Bible. So we're going to look at some past apostleships. Go to Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. Patty, could you read that? And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Okay, now notice, before you go on, that he gave. So that was past tense. We don't have apostles now. We don't have prophets now. We do still have um, evangelists and, and pastors and teachers, so. um, keep um, And the, the purpose was for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. 
So we all help each other to um, be built up. Edifying means to be built up. Keep going, Patty, 13 and 14. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. Okay, so um, go ahead, 15 and 16 also, Patty. But speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him. Into him. Into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Good, Patty. Okay, so in um, so we, we are kind of like um, a whole organism, right? Mm -hmm. And Christ is the head, and we are like the body of Christ, and we're all kind of like, you know, like a human being. It's amazing when a child grows into an adult, all the bones and the hair and the body parts, they all grow together, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we're kind of like that. We're kind of all growing together, and we're helping each other to come to this calling truth so that we can all just understand what God is telling, it has given us to know. Okay? So, um, so we're supposed to walk by the same rule, um, okay, and mind the same things as it says in Philippians 3.16. So, basically we should all be saying what God said through Paul and in his word. What God says is, is our authority. Okay? And Paul also says in uh, 3.12 of Philippians 3.12 he says, not as though I have already attained, either we're already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which I also am apprehended of Christ. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting the things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things that are before, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So Paul has not attained to be equal with Christ. He's not attained to be made into the image of Christ. Neither have we. But that's the goal. We are going to be more Christ-like. We are developing godliness. And so he had not attained it because it's very high and lofty. We'll never be God, okay? But uh, we want to be as much like uh, Christ as we can. So let's um, go now to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, 23 through 28. And I will read that. Colossians chapter 1. But I wanted you to see it because this is so amazing. Um, okay, I have said that Paul wrote finish the book, finish the Bible, okay? And we're going to find uh, those verses that say that today. Uh, verse um, Colossians 1.23 to 1.29, I'm sorry, to, to 29. 1.23 to 29. If ye continue in the faith, now that's Paul's um, faith, the, his sound doctrine, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which ye which was preached to every creature which is under heaven whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. So everybody heard Paul's message in the Roman Empire when he was alive. 
who now rejoice in my suffering for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake. So Paul suffered for the sake of the body of Christ, which is the church, whereof I am made a minister. So Paul is made a minister to the church of Christ according to the dispensation of God. Because God is dispensing this information through Paul to us, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. So it's given to Paul to fulfill the word of God by the revelation that he received from the ascended Christ. Even the mystery. So he called it a mystery because it had been kept secret. We went over that last week if you missed that. Which have been hid from ages and from generations. So it was not known in any age in any part of the Bible until it was disclosed to Paul but now is made manifest to his saints. So now, through when it was given to Paul, and now it's been made manifest. The secret is out. The mystery is revealed. That God has inserted the dispensation of grace, postponed Israel's program, and he's forming the body of Christ. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. See. This is the sanctification part. Christ is living in us, and we have the hope of glory with Him as we have fellowship with those, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in the heavenly places in the you know, future, we will. But we have Christ in you right now, the hope of glory. So we have His Holy Spirit in us. We have the whole Godhead in us. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Whom we preach, warning every man, and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me. So, Christ is working through Paul mightily. It says mightily right there. Okay? So, Christ is coming through Paul and giving all of this, the whole Bible could be red letters. Okay? Because it's all God's Word. And now we're going to look here, oh, stay where you are, Colossians 2.20. That, uh, we're right, right here. That their hearts might be comforted being knit together in love unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. See, that's the Trinity. Which chapter? Colossians 2.20. Two, oh, two, two. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So in the Godhead, okay, Colossians 2.20. Oh, no, it's 2.2. Two, two. I mean 2-2, two, two. I'm sorry. 2-2. Oh, okay, two, two. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Colossians 2-2 two, two, and 3. Okay. okay, there we go. Thank you, Maureen. <laughs> uh, I, I don't want to tell people the wrong thing. Um, Colossians 2-2 two, two is and 3. So here we, we're knit together kind of like this. See? We're all, we're, you know, we're all knitted together mm -hmm. in the body of Christ. We're with love for each other in in this love just keeps growing in us for each other, you know. Mm -hmm. And and then um, in full assurance and understanding and the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, the whole Godhead, in whom in that Godhead is hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So in the Godhead is all the wisdom and knowledge and God wants us to know the mind of Christ. Right? We talked about that last week. Um, so um, now um, go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4. Um, who wants to read that? Patty? Okay. For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? So he's saying, you know, 
you have these factions, you have these groups, you have these cliques behind Paul and Apollos, you know, you're not getting what we're saying. We're, you know, we're just ministers of Jesus Christ. You're putting your eyes on the men, you know, on the messenger, on the one who delivers the information instead of the one who the information is about, see? Mm -hmm. So some uh, said they followed Paul while others were following Apollos when they should have been one church, one body in Christ. So now we're going to read um, Acts 18, 18 through 28 because we want to uh, take a look at P Apollos because Paul is talking about Apollos. Okay. Acts what? 18. 18. Okay. 18. Acts 18. 18. Um, you could just pick out some points. Pick out some points? Okay. See, I... I don't have that page by accident, so let me go get it. Okay. Um, you want the Bible? No, I I have some points. I want points. Okay, uh, Maureen, why don't you read verse eighteen, eighteen? And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren, and sailed thence, thence into Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn, shorn. Uh, his head in Caesarea. Centuria. 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 For he had a vow. And he came to Ephesus and left them there. Okay. All right. So, um, anyway, I'm just going to pick out a few points because. Um, I don't want to, okay, take too long on this. So what, what's happening is that Paul tarried a good while in Corinth, and then he um, had made a vow, and he was sailed into Syria. So, and he came to Ephesus and left them there, you know, Priscilla and Aquila, and he went into the synagogue and talked with the Jews. And they wanted him to stay longer, but he, he didn't want to because he wanted to make it to Jerusalem. And so he left, um, you know, Priscilla and Aquila there. And then he went to Caesarea and he saluted the church. And then he went down to Antioch, which was his headquarters. Um, and then um, we start now he's going to start his third missionary journey verse 23 and after he had spent some time there he departed and he went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia in order to strengthen the disciples so he went back to Galatia there and um, so and while he was taking his trip and he's going to, you know, continue all the way over to Corinth and write Romans eventually. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, while uh, he um, then, uh, what happens is that Apollos shows up in Ephesus. Okay, and a certain Jew named Apollos, born in Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the Scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. No, they to took him unto them and expounded unto them the way of God more perfectly. So they caught him up. He only knew the the uh, baptism of John. That he got, they caught him up on on what Jesus had done, and then they caught him up on what Jesus was doing through Paul. So, um, when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, 
So he, Paul has decided that he wants to go to Achaia, which is southern Greece now, where the Corinthians are. The brethren wrote, so they, Aquila and Priscilla give a letter to him or to the people in Corinth saying, you know, this is a, someone that knows right division now, you know, and he's a Pauline um, dispensationalist and um, you should, you know, welcome him. Exhorting the disciples to receive him who when he was come helped them much with much which had believed through grace. So, the, you know, God's grace was working through Apollos to help the Corinthians. And, he, he, um, and for he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly, showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. So, Paul added to the uh, church at Corinth more Jews. So let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Um, no, yeah. Okay. Um, verse 5. Maureen? Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. Okay, so Paul says, we are both just ministers by which you believe even as the Lord gives the increase. Okay, how the Spirit conforms our will with God's is not fully understood. Turn to Acts 16.14 real quick. Acts 16.14. Um, Patty? Acts 16.14? And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, and she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. Okay, so notice how the Lord um, um, opened the heart of Lydia, okay? So how the Spirit opens our heart and conforms our will with God's to save our souls is not fully understood. Um, we are not to focus on men, is, is what Paul is saying in verse 5. Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers, see that they, they, they're messengers and servants, by whom ye believed. They, they both help more believers to come to the Lord in Corinth, even as the Lord gave to every man. But it was the Lord that worked in their hearts, right? Mm -hmm. So who's more important? The one who worked in their hearts or the messengers? The one that worked in their hearts. Right. Okay, verse 6, Patty? Oh, uh, uh, 3, oh. 6. Oh, 3, 6. Oh, oh Maureen, you, you do it. 3, 6. I have planted Apollos water but God gave the increase. Okay, so Paul planted the seed of the word and started the church by saving several in Corinth. Then Apollos came along and he watered that seed because he helped them by the grace of God to grow more because um, they, he had learned a lot from Priscilla and Aquila. Okay? But God gave the increase. See, in verse 6. So we had really God gave the uh, to every man in verse 5. Now in verse 6, God gives the increase. Patty, verse 7. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Okay, so he, he says a third time, but God giveth the increase. Okay. So, he makes the point. Neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth anything, but God is who is most important. That gave the increase, right? That caused them to believe somehow in, in their, 
conforming their will, right? Like, like mm -hmm. in the case of Lydia. Okay, verse seven. Um, whose turn, Patty? So then, neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God. Oh, well, yeah, we did that. The increase of. Okay, well, that's good, Patty. Okay. Wait, we'll do it again. Okay, so the person God uses is nothing because it's God's power by His Spirit that makes you willing and able to understand. This is a miracle that only God understands, but it has, it has to do with conforming our will to His by faith. Ministers are unimportant. Christ is all that matters. The Spirit's role in using God's Word so the unbeliever is willing to put his faith on Christ is not fully understood. I said that twice. But it's a good point to remake. But God tests the reins of the heart. Paul says, was saying, Apollos and I are nothing. God is everything. We should not elevate ministers, and neither should we disrespect them. So let's turn to Jeremiah 17.10. Jeremiah 17.10 comes right after... Uh, we 17.9, which says the heart is deceitful above, above all things, we can know it. So let's see what 17.10 says. Because 17.9 wasn't too fun. <laughs> okay, I'll read that. Okay, 17.10 says, I, the Lord, search the heart, I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his doings. So, God knows the secret of our hearts. He knows, you know, the stuff that we're made of. We, no one can get away with anything before God. He knows our thoughts and intents of our heart. That's what it says about the Word, right? He knows. So, verse 8. Patty, 3, 8. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Okay, so he that planteth and he that waters, they're both ministers. Apollos and, and uh, Paul are on the same level, see? And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. So even though they're one, Paul will receive some reward and Apollos will receive some other rewards. I have a feeling that Paul is going to be something huge in heaven, like maybe like the vice president or vice potentate. When we get to heaven, I believe Paul will have um, a very high office. And so now he's going to be starting to talk about the judgment seat of Christ and our future jobs. Um, verse 9. Uh, Maureen? For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Okay, so Paul and Apollos are laborers together with God. And so are we. We are laborers together with God. We're useful to Him when we understand the Word of God rightly divided. And uh, we understand which Bible is the perfect Word of God in English. Um, okay, so ye are God's husbandry. That means that uh, the Corinthians were a cultivated field. Cultivated field um, that for the farmer to work in. And ye are God's building. So they are also a building that's being built. The Corinthians are, you know, pe people in the body of Christ, we are a cultivated field and we are also a building. Um, we're going to have more about that soon. Uh, whose turn is it? Maureen, verse 10? Or should I read it? According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Okay. 
So um, we are working together with God, with what God's doing. As part of the body of Christ, the Corinthians are God's fertile field and his building or temple. Many farmers are needed to prepare soil, to plant, to water, to pull the weeds, to cultivate, to harvest. Each receives wages and shares in the harvest. The goal is for the church to uh, be its very best spiritually, to have quality. So that's what we do as we minister. We want everyone to be, you know, have as much knowledge of what God is possible and what he's doing now. So God graciously gave Paul the ministry of laying the foundation for the body of Christ. Let's read that verse again. I'll read it. According to the grace of God. So it was God's grace working through Paul, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. So Paul is the chief architect um, for the foundation of the body of Christ. I have laid the foundation. So he, Paul laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. So Apollos came along and he builded on that. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. So he is giving a warning here. We, we don't want any wood, hay, or stubble on that foundation. We want gold, silver, and precious stone. Um, Patty, verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Okay. So this is Jesus Christ according to what foundation that I said earlier when we went to Romans 6.25? The revelation of the mystery. Oh, oh. This is Jesus Christ according to the, the revelation, revelation of the mystery. mystery. There's one Redeemer, but he has two realms, heaven and earth, and he has two groups of people that he has redeemed and he's working with. Those who are going to, those who understand him according to the revelation of the mystery, and those who uh, uh, given to Paul, and those who understand him according to what he told Israel through his primary spokesman Moses and the prophets. Okay, so um, so let's see. Um, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So he redeemed both groups of people. He is the, the redeemer. So God graciously, graciously gave Paul the ministry of laying the foundation for the body of Christ. Then Paul came along, we talked about that, and built on that. So, But everyone has to be careful how we build on Paul's foundation. We want to make sure it's sound doctrine on top of sound doctrine. Okay, so um, Paul received Christ's ministry from heaven. Okay, verse 12. Patty? Now, if any man build upon the, this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Okay, so this foundation is what? It Jesus is Christ. Jesus Christ uh-huh. with Paul on top. Okay, that's the foundation. But it's Jesus Christ according to Revelation and Ministry, and then it's Paul's sound doctrine, Romans to Philemon. Okay? So, um, gold, silver, and precious sto- stones, when um, they last, while wood, hay, and stubble don't last. And we've already gone over the fact that the gold, silver, and precious stone, the gold is wisdom, the silver is understanding, and the precious stones is the knowledge. Okay, all three are, uh, verse, uh, words were used in Proverbs 2, 1 through 9. Okay, so um, I'll read verse 13, but read it with me. Every man's work shall be made manifest. It means, remember I said there's nothing that can be hid from God. He knows the reins of our heart. For that day shall declare it 
because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work what sword it is. So, at the judgment seat of Christ, um, you know, it's we're um, going to have be tried by fire to see what sort the work is. And remember in, when we read um, 2 Corinthians 5.10, whether it's good or bad, right? The quality of the work that we have done in this life. So let's go to Jeremiah 23.29 because we're looking now at what is that fire. Jeremiah 23.29, what is the fire that's going to try us? Okay, and it says, who's who's there first? Patty, go ahead. Yeah. It is not my word like as a fire. Okay, saith, that's good, Patty. So, yeah. So, he, God's word is like a fire. Okay? And so, we're going to be tried, you know, by Jesus Christ. And remember in Revelation chapter 1-2, uh, also, I mean, in Revelation chapter 1, it talks about his eyes are like fire. So his word and his eyes, he is the living, you know, he, Christ is, Jesus Christ is the word. And he uses his word as a fire to try us and, you know, what is the purpose of fire? The purpose of fire is to, you know, get rid of impurities, the dross, so that it's just pure gold or pure silver or pure precious stones left and all the wood, hay, and stubble are going to be burned off, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so his eyes in Revelation 2.18 are like unto a flame of fire. Fire takes away and cleanses everything that is not pure. In Proverbs 25.4 it says, take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. The finer is the goldsmith. So that was Proverbs 25.4. In a, in a sense, our lives are like a race to see how much labor we can do for the Father, God, while on earth. Knowing that his will is for all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. As ambassadors, we are sharing the gospel with the lost and those who think they are saved but have not trusted in Christ's work alone but added something to their salvation. We also help the weaker brother who mixes Peter with Paul and Israel's prophetic program with the mystery to come to the knowledge of Pauline dispensationalism. We are all so blessed to have come to the knowledge of the truth. We want as many as possible to join us in the knowledge and in this knowledge and be saved at the rapture. God wants us to do our best to have something of value at the judgment seat. So let's turn now to 1 Corinthians 9.24. 1 Corinthians 9.24 through 27. And then we'll go to 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. 1 Corinthians 9, 27 and 28. Patty. But I keep under my body. No, no, no. I'm sorry, Patty. I meant to say uh, uh, 20. Uh, it's, I'm, we're going to start earlier. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, start in 24 to 27. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth prize? So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Okay, so he, he says that um, he's running a race that he may obtain the prize. 
So we, we in a sense, are running a race so that we can have a prize at the judgment seat of Christ. And he wants us to run, have something of value, see? And so they, people who run in the uh, Olympics do it for a corruptible crown. Yeah, back then it was a laurel wreath. And, but we for an incorruptible, so you know we're going to get a crown. Um, I therefore, or uh, so run, and and I don't think it's going to be a literal crown. I think it's going to be more of a crown of reward. Okay. Um, but um, I therefore so run, not as uncertain. So I fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep un. Okay, so he's doing things purposely. We are supposed to do things purposely. We purposely use the information that we gain through Paul's epistles to, um, you know, use the God-given brains that we have so that we can um, be effective and wise and understanding and knowledgeable, right? And we keep under our body. We're not going to let ourselves get all emotional, you know. Um, we keep our bodies under control lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself may be a castaway, being, meaning not have lost reward. So, you know, I do things purposely, is what he's saying, that I'm not going to be cast away. I'm not going to have, I'm going to have some rewards when I get there to judgment seat. So we did that. Now turn to... Uh, what did I say? Second Timothy four seven and eight. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you read that, Maureen? Sure. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous Judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Okay. So, um, Paul is at the end of his life. He's about to be beheaded by Nero. It's about 60 AD. And he says that he's fought a good fight. He'd done the job of laying the foundation for the body of Christ. He wrote those 13 epistles. And from now on, there's laid up for him a crown of righteousness and for not only for him which the righteous judge Jesus Christ is going to judge us at the judgment seat shall give him but for all those who love his appearing so the question is now what is his appearing here so his appearing here is actually um, when he appeared to um, Paul on the road to Damascus and then in Titus, um, if we turn to Titus 2.11, it says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. So the grace of God appeared to all men when Paul was saved on the road to Damascus and appeared to Paul. That's when the grace of God began teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. That's how we're to conduct ourselves, with sober mind, and righteously, and godly. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing, now we're talking about disappearing, of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So there's the other appearing, right, in in you know within three verses we have both appearance isn't that exciting mm -hmm. so we have both appearance okay um, both bookends that I began to, our study with are found here in Titus I just love that okay let's go back um, verse um, 14 Patty if any man's work abide, which he hath built there upon, he shall receive a reward. Okay, so if any man's work doesn't burn up at the judgment seat, he'll get a reward. Verse 15, Maureen. If any man's work shall be burned, 
he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Okay, so if um, someone's work is burned up, if there was nothing that was built on that foundation, the double foundation that we had, Paul and Jesus, according to the Revelation mystery, their work is going to be burned up. But he, they're going to be saved as if by fire. They are still going to make it into heaven. you know. But if someone's been teaching the Acts 2 uh, false doctrine, their work is all going to go poof in a, in a cloud of smoke. Okay? But if they've been t teaching Acts 9, they'll have something of value. Okay? Um, okay, 1 Thessalonians 2.19. 1 Thessalonians 2.19. Yeah, I'll, I'll read it. Okay. Uh, or, or unless you got it. I got it. Okay, go ahead. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? Okay, so Paul is now saying to the Thessalonians that they are his crown. Okay? He's saying that they, the Thessalonians are their crown. Philippians 4.1, Maureen. Philippians 4.1. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown. Okay, so now the Philippians, that church is Paul's crown. You see, see how, you know, this goes in with 1 Timothy 2.4, where it says, you know, he wants all to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. The people at this church have been saved and have come to the knowledge of Pauline truth, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, Patty, verse uh, 17. I mean, uh, no, where are we? Uh, 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 Maureen, verse 16. Yes, 16. Oh, Patty, you can read 16. Know you not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Okay, now see the word ye... That is a plural you. So he's talking now about the Corinthians. They are the temple of God. And so remember when we talked about the building in verse 9? So that building, we find out now, is a temple for God to dwell in. Okay? Temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. So here we have, you know, God in the midst of this church. Jesus Christ, or Jesus Christ in the midst of the body of Christ. Now, if you'll turn to 1 Corinthians um, 6, 9, I think it is. Let's see. 19. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? So, in this verse even though it says ye he's talking to the individuals in the church mm -hmm. and saying no ye not you know that your body its individual body there uh, is the temple of the Holy Ghost because if you read the context then we will when we get there it has to do with you know keeping ourselves from fornication so um, there it is, um, you know, a singular temple. And here it is a plural temple. I just want to make that distinction. So um, verse 17, whose turn is it to read? Patty? Uh, no. That's in uh, first Corinthians. Oh, no, it's Maureen. Go ahead. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Okay, so now we're going to talk about, finally, this verse about if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. So remember now it's the Corinthian church. So if you'll turn to the only verse in the Bible where 
both the temple and um, defile are mentioned, it's Psalm 79, verse 1. So go there. Psalm 79, verse 1. Let's go real quick because time, we only have 18 more minutes. Psalm 79, verse 1. Who wants to read that? Okay, I'll read it. O oh God, the heathen are come into thine inheritance. Thy holy temple have they defiled. They have laid Jerusalem on heaps. So here is someone that's come into uh, Israel's temple, okay? And, and destroyed it. So um, go now to 2 Corinthians 11. Please turn to 2 Corinthians 11. I'm going to tell you how how someone can defile the temple of God. Are you in 2 Corinthians chapter 11? I want you guys to see this. Because this is really important. Okay. Verse 3. 2 Corinthians 11, 3. I'll read it. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So Paul is saying that, um, you know, the people in Corinth, men and women, can be beguiled just like Eve was. It's not just women, okay? By the simplicity that is in Christ, you know, he, he, the message of, that saves. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus. Okay. How could it be another Jesus? Could it be the Jesus of the er earthly ministry? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. This is how this the temple is going to be defiled. Someone that teaches Jesus Christ according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay. And that's another Jesus. That's Christ. And it's all biblical, but it's Christ according to his earthly ministry, whom we have not preached. That was not what Paul preached. Or if ye receive another spirit, what other spirit could he be talking about here? For ye are not under the law, but ye are under... For, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but ye are under... Grace. Okay, so if you go under the law, and people who who are Acts 2 people, they put themselves under the law, okay, and sin and condemnation and fear, okay? So legalism is the other spirit here. So another spirit would not be grace. It would be legalism, okay? And if ye receive an, uh, another spirit, okay, that was legalism, which ye have not received, we got grace from Paul, remember? Mm -hmm. Or another gospel, okay, like John 3.16, right? The gospel of the kingdom, not the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ is Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, right? So, if ye, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. He's saying, you might as well let that person who's given, who's taking you to believe in the wrong Jesus, another Jesus, who's uh, we have not preached, or, and giving you another spirit, not grace, but legalism, you might as well bear with him. So now look down here, go all the way for time's sakes to verse 14. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. How is Satan transformed into an angel of light? Let's go to verse 15 to find out. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. See, Satan's ministers are who? Where are they found? They are found in the churches all across the world, not only in this nation, but elsewhere, who are teaching the false gospel of Acts 2, following the law, not grace, 
and you know teaching um, John 3.16 instead of 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. So Satan is not in the bars, he's in the churches. Now go down to verse 22. Now he's talking to the Corinthians and he says, are they Hebrews? So am I. So where, what, where, what nationality were these people that were had crept into Corinthian church? What were they? Hebrews. They were Hebrews. Okay, they were Hebrews, and they were defiling. That's an example of being of defiling the temple of God. See, isn't that interesting? Okay. So let's go on to verse 18, Patty, 318. Uh, let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in, his, in this world, let him be, become a fool, that he may be wise. Okay. So, you know, Christ is our everything. We are, you know, supposed to, Paul is saying, be willing to be fools for Christ. Okay? Go to uh, 410. We're in 3. Go right over to 410 and see here. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Paul is our pattern. Whenever we see how Paul is acting, we should follow his our pattern. We should imitate Paul. We should be willing to be a fool for Christ. Okay? We should be willing to be despised. We are we should be willing for someone else to be strong while we are weak or appear to be weak. Okay, so um, that is um, how, you know, we shouldn't be thinking that we are something when we're not. Because we're not wise in this world. Okay, the wisdom of this world is vanity to God. It's foolishness to God. Um, verse 19, Maureen. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Okay. So, um, it is written is another time where we have to find out where it was written, right? He taketh the wise in his own craftiness. So, let's turn to Psalm 94, 1 and Job 5, 13. Psalm 94, verse 1. And Job... 5.13 Whoever gets there first <laughs> Oh I think 11 94.11 oh. um, Yeah, 94.11 that's, that's what it is 94.11, go ahead, Pat, um, Maureen. The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man, that they are vanity. Okay, and Patty, can you read Job 5.13? Okay, so the worldly men's thoughts are vanity. He taketh the wise in their own craftiness, and the counsel of the forward is carried headlong. Okay. They have carried headlong like, you know, falls, you know, forward. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of like Judas when he was, mm -hmm. died and he fell forward. Remember that? Mm -hmm. So, ah, where's Job? Mm -hmm. um, okay. 5.13. Okay. So, Job 5.13, right? Mm -hmm. 
He taketh the wise in their own craftiness, and the counsel of the froward is carried headlong. So who was in Judas? Satan. Satan, okay? So he's going to um, show here that it was really Satan who thought that he was so wise that you know no secret could be held kept from him mm -hmm. um, and then God out um, smarted um, his, uh, Satan by keeping a secret right now let me see if I can find that that verse in Daniel Lost a page. There it is. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So it says in um, Ezekiel 28:3. I'll just read it to you. <coughs> Satan. <coughs> okay. Satan <coughs> thought he was wise and that no secret could be hid from him. Right. So it's in Ezekiel 28:3. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. That is what Satan thought. Okay? That he, he thought he was wiser than Daniel and that no secret. Satan thought that God's people, the Jews, crucified their Messiah. That if God's people, the Jews, crucified their Messiah, that God would hate them and that he would somehow gain the earth. But God caught Satan in his own craftiness and ransomed Jacob from him by keeping a secret. Turn to Jeremiah 31.11. <clears throat> I read this this morning. Am I going through the Bible in a year? So I was happy that I had this to, to share with you today. Patty, you want to read that? Jeremiah 31.11 For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Okay, so the Lord ransomed Jacob from the hand of him that's Satan that was stronger than he, Jacob. Okay? Yeah. So... Um, God, the Lord Jesus Christ, at his, you know, his cross work, he overcame Satan. He called out Satan when he was on the cross. The, there was a battle that went on, and, and Christ won. Verse 20. Patty, you want to read 320? Or, or no. yeah, go ahead. And again, the Lord knoweth, knoweth the thoughts of the wise that they are vain. Okay, so that's kind of what we read in um, Psalm 94. Therefore, verse 21, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. So we're, we're not going to, you know, glory in men because Christ has already given us everything. Let's turn to Ephesians 1, 3. Just, just, just take a quick gander. Quick gander. Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So we already have all the blessings up front. Because God knew that our greatest motivator would be our love for Him. Verse 22, Maureen. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours. Everything is yours uh, in Christ, is what Paul's saying. And remember that at the time when um, Corinthians was written in, in Acts 19, remember? So it was during the Acts period where Peter's group was still ministering to the circumcision. So um, Peter's group was still... But many of them had come over and realized that God was now working with Paul um, and so they were helping Paul because that's what God was doing. So that was little flock believers like Barnabas 
and Silas and Luke. Those little flock believers were helping Paul because they knew that's what God was doing. Patty, verse 23. And ye are Christ's, and Christ is God's. Right. So, um, Oh, here we go. So we're gods. Yeah, we, we're gods. And we're so we have everything in... in um, we have double security. We have double security because we are Christ and Christ is gods. You see how that is double security? Mm -hmm. So um, let's go to Colossians <clears throat> 3 um, verse 2. Colossians 3, verse 2. Um, Maureen? Set your affection no, on... No, no, Colossians 3, verse 2. Set your affection no. on... Colossians 3, verse 2. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right. Okay, go ahead. It's 2 and 3. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Okay, so um, Maureen, are we supposed to set our affection on being part of the kingdom on earth? No. Or, sh or should we set our affection on being part of the spe blessing, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places? On the things above in heaven. Right, on the things of heaven. That's where... You know, that's what we're going to be putting our affection on. And see how it says here, for ye are dead. We're dead, right? We died with Christ. Mm -hmm. And your life is hid with Christ in God. So that's another double security. So we're hid in Christ, in who's in God. So we are doubly secure. There's nothing that can happen to us. And to take us um, out of Christ. Um, we're very secure there. So now let's go over our homework. Let's turn in our books um, to page 185. And let's finish our last um, one on page 184. This is Through the Book of Books by Lori Verstegen. We have our handouts here. So, um, for in ver uh, number six at the bottom of page 184, in uh, read First Corinthians 2, 7 and 8. How did God show he was wiser than the princes of this world who are led by Satan? Because he God would, did what? He kept a secret. Secret. Yes. God's secret. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Top of page 185. Paul is a wise master builder. Read 1 Corinthians 3, 10, 11, 1 Corinthians 4, 16, and 1 Corinthians 11, 1. Okay, so um, let's, uh, uh, we've read everything there, except for I don't think we did 4, 16. So let's read 1 Corinthians 4, 16, and 11, 1. Okay, I'll read 4, 16. It says, Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Who's the me there? Paul. Paul. Good. Okay, let's go to 1 Corinthians 11, 1. Patty, you want to read that? Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Good job, Patty. Yeah, so um, in our question it says, Paul compares himself to a wise master builder who has laid the foundation of the church. Who or what? is the foundation Jesus Christ perfect verse uh, question two what or who does Paul say we should follow follow me as I also follow Christ right mm -hmm. um, in the indwelling Holy Spirit 1st Corinthians 619 and 1st Corinthians 211 if you are saved what or who dwells in you Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God. 
the Holy Spirit. Because remember, you have the whole Godhead in you. So you have God is Spirit, the Son is Spirit, and the Holy Ghost is Spirit. So you have the whole Godhead in you. Okay? The Spirit of God dwells in you. So I put the Spirit of God. Um, read 1 Corinthians 2, 11, 12. What is the one reason God gives us the Holy Spirit? So the Holy Spirit can be any one of the Godhead. What is what is one reason? So that we can know the things of God, to think like Him and do what He would do. Next question. The body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12. Well, we're not there yet. So we're gonna we're gonna um, you know call it a day. Let's an a close with a word of prayer. Dear Father God, in Jesus' name, I come before you and I thank you for this uh, Bible lesson that you gave us today. And we pray, Lord, that um, only the things um, that were said that's perfectly according to your word will last, and um, that uh, you continue to be exalted Lord Jesus Christ in our lives and that we can give you all the glory in Jesus name Amen